Free games are the secret sauce Steam runs off. Everyone and their mother has played a free game on Steam. I mean, look at the newly released CS2 with its millions of daily users already. But what about the games that no one ever touches? I thought to myself as I loaded up Valorant for the fifth time today. I have always had segments on my stream in which I play a random free indie game for around an hour just to see what it's like. I would do paid games, but I'm a poor student, so maybe later. But from what I've found, some of these free games are incredible and stupidly underrated. I mean, look at this. This is a game I found a while back called Blaster Beats, and it's a third person shooter free for all in which all players can only shoot in time with the music. But that's not what this video is about. All these free games get swept under the rug due to being determined as pure ass by the Steam player base. But I wanted to see what Steam players are really missing out on. That's why I decided to throw myself in and play every single free game that came out this week and rank them to determine which is truly the next Fortnite that everyone's missing out on. 36 games released in this time period but one was VR only and another game was about intercourse, so both of these were missed out on, leaving me with 34 games to play throughout this week. Most of these games I'd never heard of, others I didn't even know existed at all, even if I felt like I should, and some of these I could tell were going to be contenders for true hidden gems. I'll be ranking these games on a tier list from hidden gem to F tier, but I won't spend too long in each game since we have so many to get through, so let's stop messing around and get started. The first game I played was an interesting one to begin with. As I loaded up, I got flashbacks to my childhood Flash games, considering this bad boy looked like it was made in the same era as Microsoft PowerPoint transitions were created. I wiped away the thoughts of Purple Palace in my head and began to read what the game was. Apparently it was some form of Chinese chess, as they put it on the homepage, and my Twitch chat started plastering that there was a good chance it was some sort of Chinese spyware or money laundering scheme. Oh, I streamed this all live on Twitch by the way, you should come check it out. Contrary to popular belief. I really didn't think the game was all too bad. The main problem is I had no idea how to play Chinese chess, so I had no clue what I was doing, which made the game pretty boring. Well then why say I can go there if I can't fucking go there, dipshit? Which one's the one I'm supposed to be protecting? Protecting? What? Leave me alone! You lose. No! I think I lasted all of five minutes before I gave up and went on to the next game. I don't know why you guys have heard to skip this brush. Chinese chess is sick. One last thing about this game though. For some reason there were tutorials on how to play in the bottom left with free tutorials and then also paid tutorials. Obviously I touched neither because I'd already given up on that game. But looking at it, I kind of just went, huh, weird. I guess it probably is money laundering. C tier, probably because it would be better if I knew how to play it. The next game, Sangoku, was somehow worse than that. It was practically a mobile game, and funnily enough, it was also a Chinese strategy game. I won't stick on this game for long, as I thought it was just as boring as the last, and I spent about the same amount of time on it. We joked about Chinese spyware before, but the things the game made me accept to play, I wouldn't be surprised if it turned my PC into a mining rig before the end of the stream. <laughs> Bro. After skipping over about 20 years of tutorials, I threw myself into the game with a bot in which you had to place and move 50 different troops individually between each go. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I have to move every single one of them. Then I lost and genuinely, I don't even know how. Yeah, fuck you, bitch. Oh, he's dead. I lost? But that's okay, I thought it would be better content anyway if I went into an online game against a real person, but unsurprisingly, there were zero other people playing this game, so I just gave up and carried on with my journey. There's no opponents, bro. You can- it's faster matchmaking in fucking Card to see Snow on fucking Club Penguin. D tier. There was some sort of game here I could probably play at least, even if it was god awful. Welcome to the third game. <laughs> I can't, man. Dark Odyssey was more or less a glorified cookie clicker, fitting into a genre I'd never heard of called an idle clicker or something like that. The only button I could click was for accepting quests or upgrading my gear, both of which seemed unsubstantial considering, despite the health bar my player had, I'm completely invincible. After a long debate with chat while we were waiting for some daily gift to see what it would do, we compromised and gave the game a C tier, as chat was saying A or B and I was saying E or F, so I thought C was fair game. Oh, by the way, that daily gift had more or less nothing in it, so I begrudgingly left to go on to the next game. What a blast this game has been! 
Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we have our first actual game. Fatal Zone is a very simple and low-key boring top-down zombie shooter. And as well as that, it ended up only being a demo to a full game. Oh, it's because it's a demo! The gameplay itself was okay. Far from the best top-down shooter I'd played, but you know, it's far better than all the other games we had played so far. The aim of the game is to fend off waves of zombies to earn points or coins or whatever, to get better guns between the games and then get better at killing zombies. Almost like a roguelite or a tycoon. The only big problem I had with it was that I felt like the progression was too slow, especially for the start of a game and definitely a demo for a full game. Wow, I've got the weapons workshop, baby! Ooh, what's this? Alright, well I can't- I unlocked the fucking weapons workshop and I can't do anything because the weapons workshop has to be level 2. Overall, I really didn't mind it though. It wasn't bad, it wasn't incredible, just a bit boring. I'll give it a B tier. Going into Only Fortress, this game is really interesting and I won't spoil why just yet. I opened the game and I was told I had to make an account. So after going through a very glitchy UI, I got into the game after about five minutes. I was confused once I was in. I was in a house with an NPC and what seemed to be exits I couldn't use because I wasn't a high enough level to leave the fortress. I searched and searched while looking for a way to grind or go somewhere or just do something, but to no avail. I ended up just giving in, accepting that the game was either unfinished or glitched or something. Thing. Can I? Uh, hello? Can I? I can't do anything. Well, I guess that's the game then. It was then when I closed the game and reread the name of the title, Only Fortress. The game is designed to be the start of an RPG that you can't continue to troll people who are willing enough to download it. I'm ashamed to say that the game got me and wasted a good 10 minutes of my life, but at least the character creator was fun. I loved my little cyan man. F tier, but I promise the good games come now. Well, not quite yet, because we have to get through this game first, but it's arguably a game in the first place. I mentioned earlier that I had to miss a game due to nudity and not being able to play on stream. Well, this one happened to slip under my radar. I booted the game and couldn't figure out what the game was at first. Is this a porn game? It seemed to be a mini game where you had to hold this liquid in this tanker at a specific point. I thought, fair. Simple enough, I can do that. It was then that I realized that the character on the right side of the screen started growing and growing. Confused, curious, and honestly a by the art style and relatively smooth gameplay, I played on. Titties. Titties popped out of the girl's shirt and came up on my screen. I shut down the game and the stream ASAP and deleted the VOD as soon as I could. I don't think anyone saw that, but I'm gonna go delete the VOD, so give me two seconds. Feeling lucky that I don't think anyone was in chat, and I'm small enough on Twitch to not quite get banned yet. If anyone on Twitch is watching this, I'm genuinely sorry, it was a huge mistake, my bad. Brother! Why are all the games so fucking weird? This game also goes in F tier. I really wouldn't recommend unless you're a white British lesbian video essayer. Everyone, put your hands together. We've done it. We found a good game. We made it to King of Crabs, an actual good game. This game was on my radar when I went to download everything because honestly, it looked good and happy and I would have taken anything after last game. Crabs is really simple. It's basically a Gario, if you remember that game. No! The concept was really simple, but hand on my heart, it was really funny and entertaining running around as a crab with an Uzi just blasting the living daylights out of everything I could see and eating them. Nice. The game itself was pretty like I said before. It ran well, it wasn't too hard to understand, and was really easy to get into. The rest of the people playing weren't sweaty or anything, so even though I only had one run, it was a good run, especially considering it was my first, and honestly, this is the first game I played that I'll recommend just for a laugh. Play it once, have some fun, create fond memories, and enjoy wasting time on it for a bit. Ate it. And if you thought that game was good, we've just come across our first hidden gem. A game that you must go onto your mother's laptop after this video and download to try this. Reverser Bots is a masterpiece, in the same way a short film is in comparison to a feature length. It's so short there is no story, but it gets completely carried by the flawlessly designed gameplay. This little low poly character is you, and pretty early on you get the option to press space to turn into another character. The hard bit is the movement and shoot controls actually switch between forms, meaning in one form you use WA 
WASD to move and mouse to shoot, but in the other form you use mouse to move and WASD to shoot. You can only shoot specific things in one form or the other, meaning you have to change between them constantly. And in eight short levels, you have the chance to master this. I know I'm not exactly selling this, but the game was truly an experience I'd recommend to everyone watching this video, even if completing the game only takes an hour. There's something so balanced and perfect about how the gameplay is managed, and how perfectly it encapsulates the idea of juggling two things simultaneously. Not too different to tapping your head and rubbing your tummy. It's almost an experiment to test how quickly the human body can get used to controlling something completely unnatural to us, similar to a third arm or an extra finger. I know I've spoken about this game a lot already, but I'm going to be touching on spoilers now, so if you plan on playing, I'd recommend skipping to this timestamp. This game is so incredible, I actually came back off stream to play through the secret boss fight at the end of the game. And if I'm being real, it's because I felt gross for not finishing the game I'd started. This is S tier. I entice you put the hour into this game that it deserves ASAP. But for now, let's move on to the next game. I know you lot and I were on a high for a moment there, as hope spewed from my ears that the rest of the games were great, but then this game came up. There's really not a lot to say about this game. No, really, I booted it up and the game was so laggy I couldn't play it on stream. I tried twice on stream and then once off stream to see if I could get any gameplay at all, but alas, it didn't even boot. F tier. <laughs> and we'll never know if little Johnny got home. But the goated game train rides on. The next game started and I couldn't help but notice prologue in the title, making me think this cute little thing was nothing more than a demo too. Whoa. I seem to be in South Dakota. After completing a tutorial for 10 minutes, I assumed the game would be over. Oh, how I was wrong. Up until this point, I was thinking maybe a B or an A tier, all because of the graphics and gameplay. Oh, is that it? Oh wait, join game. But then I realized the game had multiplayer. Without hesitation, I hopped into an open server. Oh my god, it's gorgeous! Quick note, I have no idea how popular this game is, but the fact I had never heard of it blew me away. I wasn't sure what to expect going into this, but as a chatter described best, it was basically Genshin Impact Minecraft. The open world I dropped into was gorgeous, it was exciting, and it gave me incredible inspiration to explore and hunt down what was really going on inside this world. And that wasn't even the end of it. The game is multiplayer. Freaking multiplayer! There's nothing stopping any of you right now from downloading this game off Steam and experiencing all of this with your friends right now. Easiest S tier of my life. But all good things must come to an end. Genuinely, I was hopeful for this game. I saw the icon and I was curious to see what gameplay mechanics they had matched up with this style. Within minutes of booting the game, I got a huge context dump with way too much flashback, combined with possibly one of the worst sound effects for text coming on the screen humanly possible. That is fucking awful, that brings it down a tier. There were no settings, I couldn't turn the game down, so I merely sat through the agony until the game actually started. Which was unfortunately just as bad. <laughs> Brother, I can't. Guys, I want you guys to know that I can't walk diagonally. There are three levels to go through, which seems simple in itself, but I couldn't get past the first for some reason. The environment was horrifically glitchy. This guy comes out of the fucking walls, watch this. BASH! Oh, what the fuck? I'm in the bed! I'm in the bed! I'm in the bed! I'm in the bed! And that combined with the controls being WASD to move, and then J and K to attack. I wish they had like a picture for controls, because right now the only button I know is K. The the mouse seems to do nothing. Oh, uh, it's J, it's J for some reason. I was struggling to have a fun time, to say the least. I wasn't really given an objective for the first level, only to run to the four corners of the screen and get four keys to put into an elevator to take me to the next level. But after completing this task twice, mind you, both times it said I was missing something and made me replay the level. What? Oh, fuck off. I'm not doing this. So I decided to give up just so my ears would stop bleeding. I'm putting this in E tier. I know I haven't had a good thing to say about it, but it almost seems like someone's first game and the charm that those games always carry, I can't bash it. And therefore, I can't bring myself to put it in F tier. Feels like beating a child down. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Now, I know this game looks okay, it's exactly what it says on the cover, but I can't bring myself to rate it that highly. It was good, well, it was okay, but I'll get to that in a moment. The main problem was that I finished the whole thing in 4 minutes. Playing it was really strange, because I was getting through it so, so quickly that I almost wanted it to be harder, so it, you know, lasted longer. But the other half of me actually wanted it to be easier, because I spent almost all of the game trying to figure out what defines a UFO in this context. How the fuck is that a UFO, bro? It's over, man. 
That's literally a rubber ring, man. You can't fool me. I swear some of the things I clicked on could easily have been defined as something a lonely middle-aged man only takes out of his drawer past 10 p.m. I'm gonna have to give it a D tier. I just think it was too short. It was the only game I completely 100% finished in this whole video. I did it! And it was in literally four minutes. Don't waste your time playing this game. If you want to play it, just come watch my video on my VOD channel. The only reason I can think of for this game not being far more popular is that it screams 2012 YouTube, which honestly might be why I like it so much. Paperless is more or less 3D Pac-Man with jump scares, but it's so much more than that too. The music, the consistent art, and the atmosphere are so much better than I thought they'd be, even to the point where I was actually caught off guard by how much I was genuinely ingrained in the world. Ah! Fuck off! I come from the generation of Slender and FNAF. So I don't get scared at games too much, but this actually got me at some points. Oh, fuck off, man! Oh, fuck off, man! I, I'm fucking fucking twat. I see it as a game you play in a Discord server and stream to your friends as you all poo yourself together. I only had time for one level, and for some reason the game engine it uses makes it overly hard to run, given the fact that it's a bunch of 2D assets. But I'm still going to put it in A tier and recommend you give it a go. Right, I know what you're thinking looking at this game, and I completely agree. This is a hill climb racing ditto. And if you don't know what that is, I don't blame you. It's a mobile game from 13 years ago. Christ, I'm old. Anyway, it wasn't that bad. It was just practically a mobile game. It wasn't very balanced, but it was a good laugh for the five minutes I played it. It brought me back to simpler times in which I was nine years old playing congruent games on my favorite sites like Miniclip and GirlGames.com, which was a nice thought before I came back to reality and looked at what I was actually staring at. There really wasn't a lot to the game. You get a bunch of random abilities at the start, and you essentially just go as far as you can. As you can imagine, I got pretty bored of this after about five minutes. Why does the guy- Oh, fuck's sake. Right, I'll have one more- I'll have one more run, and then I'm, I'm not playing it. So I took myself into one final run before I moved on to the next game, and apparently destroyed the game. My wheel! First, my wheel got stuck. But after this, I accidentally found an exploit and tried my hardest to get my wheel unstuck. It was this moment I did something. I have no idea what, but it broke the game. Literally launching myself into the atmosphere. Do you reckon I got my wheel back? I'm confident to say that this is the highest anyone has gone in this game full stop. So Guinness, if you're watching this, deliver my world record to this address, please. Anyway, D tier. It was okay, just nothing special and not particularly enticing. This is going to be as concise as I can be because I don't want to give any more attention to this mobile drool than I have to. It's boring as shit. You play as a caveman and go through very simple puzzle levels. I'm pretty sure it's directly imported from an iPhone 12 or whatever. I ended up playing an Italian purely because I was taking the mickey at this point and I don't think I could have cared less for this game. Play I'll play this one on Italian. Okay, that doesn't mean audio, but you know, the fact that it says audio and there's headphones, I thought they would have said audio. Oh, it's just community, obviously. I can't find any reason for why a sane person would put the time and effort into going onto and playing this game. There was no passion. There was no care put into this game. It felt like a visual representation of a list of checkboxes a group of developers have for what makes a good mobile game. I'm putting it in E tier, and the only reason it's not an F tier is because the art and graphics are okay, even if the animations are rough as all hell. Rogue Vive was pretty basic, but also actually quite fun. Its main strength was that it played into its ease and made the game extremely uncomplicated to get into. Of course, this is the second top-down shooter we've played so far, and I'll just quickly say that this is definitely the better of the two. The upgrades are far more fun, and the progression between each level is much, much faster. I even managed to get two main upgrades after the first game, which instantly made the next game after feel much more fun and fresh. How much money have I got? Yeah, new gun time, baby! Actually, what are the upgrades? What are the upgrades? Can I get both? I can get both. I'm just gonna get both. Something weird I wanted to mention is that the music goes incredibly hard, but it also awakened a memory in me since I instantly recognized it as very similar to the Beetlejuice theme. No idea if it's related. I just thought it was funny that they were similar and they both go as hard as each other. It also looks similar to Terraria, but that's probably more so a coincidence. I'm gonna give it a B2, which I know is ironic considering I said it was better than the last one, but I can't put extremely simple games like this any higher. 
I'm really not the biggest weeb in the world, but I'll be honest, I really enjoyed this game. I went in, honestly getting ready to make fun of it, as was my chat. One Piece, <gasps> the One Piece, the One Piece is real. But after an extremely overly long tutorial, I threw myself into a game and honestly had a blast. I originally wasn't going to play past the tutorial due to the designated 15 minutes I gave myself. I'm still Amazing. in the fucking tutorial. I, I'm not gonna play a real game. I'm not gonna play a real game. I don't care about the my Harry Academia battle pass, bro. Get me out of here. I don't care about the missions. Let me let me play Fortnite, man. But then I realized voice chat was in the game, which meant I had the chance to make friends. For some reason, there was open mic only, but that ended up being more of a blessing than a curse. Have you uh, do, do you watch a lot of uh, MHA? I have. I've watched up to season five. I haven't watched season six yet. I'm slow on that. No, fair enough. I've only seen up to like season three right now. Like it is a really cool idea, but I'm wondering why Cementos is here and not like twice or something. That's something I'm wondering. Yeah, no, same. I met this dude and we had a really long conversation about the game and anime, even if I was pretending to know a lot more than I did. A lot of the mechanics were explained to me while I was exploring and discovering how well-crafted and honestly beautiful this game was. I didn't realize it was a battle royale going in, but that genre actually seemed to really fit the franchise. And despite the queue world around us, the game ran really well, much better than some of the games before this. I managed to experience basically everything in the first game I had, which was also actually the only game I had. And it showed me that this game is really a game worth playing, whether you're a fan of my Hero Academia or not. Me and this guy actually ended up winning, which was a pleasant surprise. Oh, we won! My first game ever! Let's go! <laughs> we are the champions, my friends. I'm gonna give this an A tier. It's really well made and genuinely is fun, but I feel like that's owed more so to the enjoyment of the genre rather than anything in particular that the game makes unique or special. But I digress. I do really recommend this game and it's a must have if you're keen to meet like-minded weebs. I sat down and booted this game and got horrific deja vu. We literally played this game 15 minutes ago. It's identical from head to toe, and I was horrifically disappointed. It turns out these idle games are one of the main sources of bloatware that plague the Steam free game library, and there's little to no variation between any of them. There's literally more variation in Minecraft Xbox 360 Skin Pack 4. Everything I would say about this game, I already said before, so let's just move on. Eat it. Don't even try this game, honestly. I found Full Moon interesting at the beginning, especially with the art style it had. I always check the control menus before I enter games, but for some reason the control menu for this wasn't even a control menu. It was a list of USBs I had plugged in. Flustered and embarrassed at the unneeded exposure, I moved on and hopped into the game. As I loaded in, I started wandering around, curious as to see what I could find and could do, which ended up being nothing. Ah, oh, I'm the princess of the castle! The only thing I could really find was a strange projector room that was practically a mini tutorial on how to crop. My brain was instantly sent to Stargy Valley and I pricked up with intrigue, which in turn slowly died down as I explored the whole town on the search for a shovel. There was nothing. Nish. Naught and I decided it wasn't worth my time and gave up to go on to the next game. I'm gonna give this one a D tier. Honestly, the art style really resonated with me, and if it really was a lesser Stardew Valley, it could have been really good, but I was stuck from the get-go. This game looks wank, but I promise you it's not. This is Dung Beetle Adventure, a puzzle game that spans several screens and progressions. I believe my favorite part about this game was that it wasn't simply move from one screen to another and move on. It was that to do some puzzles, you were required to go back onto previous screens and retry some things with newfound items. The art really wasn't perfect, as you can clearly see, but despite the cool maths game's vibes it blew off, I did find it extremely charming. The puzzles themselves weren't extremely hard. Magnet. Oh! And I know that because I'm a grade A dumbass. What am I playing as? I'm this little pink motherfucker down here. Yet, I still managed to piece it all together, but they were also hard enough to critically make me think and try a lot of really interesting things. Why happens if I press on these uh, butterflies? Oh, they fuck off. Okay. I unfortunately didn't get to finish this game, despite letting myself play for over 20 minutes instead of the set 15, but it is 100% one of the ones I'll go back to finish off after stream. Eight it. It's adorable. Right, so this is an interesting one. There was a lot of story in this one, but as with a lot of story-focused games in this video, it was all dumped on me at the start. Is that it? Right, that was only 10 minutes. At first, I was into it, giving all the characters little voices even, but it just droned on and on, so I gave up and spammed all the way to the end. Oh, bro, there's too much text. 
My boy Fanny! In hindsight, this was a bad move because when the gameplay actually began, I was a deer in headlights. I had no clue what I was doing. Oh, I'm playing! I can't believe it. Oh, it's different for you. I began clicking and poking and prodding and was simply looking for something to start on, which happened to be the bed. Sleep. Is the game frozen? Uh, yeah, I softlocked it. I can't do anything. Which then softlocked me. Right, well, this has been great. I dipped. I didn't really have enough time for another go, and the game really lost me after the lore dump. But it seemed pretty interesting and well put together, so I'll throw this one in C tier. Okay, everyone get comfortable and look how incredible this game is. Okay, I hope that was fun because I can't play it. It turned out to be VR only despite what Steam says, so oh well. Creative VR 3D- Oh shit, is it VR? Looks cool if you have VR. I'd give it a go, but I have no idea. F tier. This one was surprisingly good. Not that I expected anything bad, but with what I've seen recently, I wasn't really expecting a lot. You play as this little dead dude and essentially try and get through rooms as puzzles. This is a prologue to what seems to be a full game, but we're not here to talk about the full game. You have two forms you can transform into with little candles dotted around the map, and that in itself was pretty enticing. It was new and interesting, and it was definitely something fun to experiment and mess around with. But then after that, the game didn't really grip me. I'm not sure why. Maybe I'd burn out from all the new games at this point, or maybe it wasn't made with as much love and care as the full game. But either way, I'm putting this in B tier. It was really enticing, but just not gripping, and I'm not sure why. But I would recommend trying this one out either way. Right, before we begin this one, I just want to say, try it. It's less than 10 minutes long, and the game doesn't even let you mess up, so you can really experience all of this right now. This is extremely fascinating, as it's a genre and a gameplay combination I would never have thought of in my life. Like I said, the game itself was quite short, but absurdly powerful. I'll delay the true message of the piece until the end, giving you time to pause the video and try it yourself before coming back. But you're the youngest in a family of four rabbits, and every day, your family argues and argues and argues, but but all you hear is the young child, without saying a word, are the negative things they say about you. And this is when it gets interesting. It's a rhythm game that times classical music with the family arguing, which is the last thing I expected. The musical pieces are all ones you'd most likely know, which adds to the experience as, if you've ever partaken in a family fight, it makes the whole experience familiar in an uncomfortable but good sense. The pussy from Twilight! Throughout the game, the fights get harder and more troublesome, and you hear from the small one you play as between every day, with each message getting harder. Even my mum joined in today. today. I never do anything right. Like I said, it's short but powerful, especially considering it ends so abruptly. Oh, sorry, my, my mistake. Can't take it anymore. Was that the bite of 87? And even though you know what happens now, I still say give it a go. The game was great, but the fact that it was so short really drags it down, which is why I'm giving it a B tier. But this is a B tier that I really recommend. Uh, this game really wasn't all too bad, but to say it's my kind of game is a huge understatement. Booting it up and seeing some of the characters, I was really worried that this would be some kind of porn game, but we ended up being okay. However, I did get bored extraordinarily quickly. I ended up downloading an auto clicker, as it seemed all this game was was dialogue and choosing options. Right, let's go. Let's get through this whole game in about three minutes. Well, I'm having a fucking blast myself. And funnily enough, we managed to get through the whole game in give or take 10 minutes. It was so worth getting an auto-clicker, bro. <laughs> what the fuck am I looking at? I won! There was one specific point that I accidentally stopped at and had a conversation with this anglerfish man. He was literally the stuff of nightmares. Oh, what the fuck? Genuinely no idea what that was about, but we did play Smash or Pass with chat on him, which is always a good laugh. Smash or Pass the anglerfish. This is a hard smash, bro. That guy gives head like nothing before, bro. Afterwards, I did really quick maths and figured out that if I took around one second for choice and dialogue box on average, given how fast the auto clicker was going, the game would have taken around four and a half hours. And to be honest, I don't really know how to feel about that. Apparently I got the bankrupt ending, which I thought was pretty cool because it meant that there were different endings. Not like I was going to do them, but if this is your type of game, I imagine you'd love that. Eat it, but honestly it's just because this is not my type of game. Dragon Kingdoms has it all. Good art, fun gameplay, and an expansive world, and even a storyline. This was a huge contender for maybe even the best game yet 
until I started exploring. I moved from screen to screen, feeling weirdly reminiscent from a link to the past, but then something troublesome happened. Everything was the same. There were slimes everywhere, and only slimes. This game seemed really cool for about two minutes, but after running through this world for about, I would say about two minutes as well, there's nothing here. There's a bunch of enemies, and they are all the same enemy. The game pretty quickly became a dodge sesh, just trying to avoid slimes to avoid encounters to keep exploring, but there was just nothing out there but slimes that I could easily one-shot. I just felt blessed that I did decide to dodge rather than kill them all because I would have been there for hours, if not longer, to absolutely no avail. The game instantly dropped a few tears, disappointingly since simply what it was. There was so much hope with the animations and gameplay, but it ended up just being a huge empty world. Maybe it was a metaphor for capitalism or something? C tier. I read on the Steam page that this game goes no further than a few sexual themes, and therefore, after last game, I thought it would be okay to try this one. But on boot, I received this message. Please ensure you are of an appropriate age to view this content in your country or jurisdiction. Guys, I don't think I'm going to play this game suddenly. I'm sure this game would have been an S tier, but we'll never know, so I'll just go with F. We're back on the MMO grind, baby, and with another character creator. I was keen to make another Cyan Man, only to be severely underwhelmed by the choices I was given. We're gonna be Cyan Man too. No, wait, I didn't mean to be black. How do I- I can't- Why well, can't be Cyan? Hello? I did my best to become as Cyan as I could, but the lackey in blue was a drain from the beginning. The game itself seemed to be pretty okay, though. Just a big, dead MMO. There seemed to be tons of ways to go and lots of directions to go into, with full, beautiful, pixel-themed structures, but with no one else playing, I found myself in a bit of a pickle. I started saying silly things in chat, assuming no one else was there, only to be completely shut down from the other players who came out of nowhere. But it's just dead. <laughs> Guys, it's not dead! There's people in chat! Oh, fuck! I attempted to apologize and also decrypt what they were trying to say to me. You will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> What the fuck is going on? Only to find myself stuck in a random corner next to a graveyard. I attempted to get out for a couple minutes, but I ended up concluding that it was weirdly fitting considering the MMO itself was pretty dead. And I saw that as a dramatic way to hang my coat and move on, as the game is also, in itself, in the dead. But on a real one, I feel like this game could be pretty good if it was just a bit more alive. Which it actually might be by the time this video comes out. B tier. This game is absurdly hilarious, but unfortunately, that's the only positive I can give it. With the worst menu music I can possibly imagine for the- right, a foot of the game. And it's using a trap remix of the chicken dance song. Combined with the strangest sound effects in game. Why is there Michael Jackson sound effects, bro? I'd given up on this game. Now see, if the game worked, I'd actually recommend this because it's absolutely one of the best stupid games you and a group of friends can play for an hour on a Friday night. But the game itself didn't work. <laughs> The game doesn't even work! And I left it at that. I didn't delve into what this game was fully, and honestly, I'm not sure I want to, but I'll reiterate again, it is absolutely hilarious. Still gets an F tier though. There are better games at the bottom of the barrel in Roblox. Now, this wasn't really a game. I'm not sure what this was, if I'm being honest. It didn't run spectacularly, but considering the visuals, I'm not really surprised. It was almost a desktop wallpaper game, I suppose, but I'm not really 100% sure. We had a weird problem with motion sickness, since the visual controls weren't fixed on the Z axis. So theoretically, we could spin forever, but given what we were looking at, I really would not recommend that. Whatever it was though, chat and I agreed that it was doing a pretty good job of it, so we decided to give it a C tier. And that's it. There's literally nothing else to the game, so let's move on. This game was freaking adorable, and it might even be the best game we played. It wasn't a demo, there were no in-app purchases as far as I could find, and I couldn't believe it had gone completely under the radar. It's completely free, and it might be the only game we played that I can stand here and say, I have no idea why it was free. I didn't get to play it for very long, but it's a story-based game where you play as a cute little clockwork robot, fending off enemies and exploring levels in what seems to be a small wooden cabin or helm of a ship. It was puzzle-based, and extremely robo-chibby if you remember that game, and I will absolutely go back and carry on playing this game off stream. Fluffy, if you can, can you check how many people are playing this on the Steam charts? Three? The peak is seven! This game is so good and it's completely free! This is the best game. S tier. This is a really peculiar game, as it was good. 
brilliant even, but I was so lost. It seems to be an RPG based around saying what you like to each NPC until you hit the correct answer. This is extremely indulging. Maybe your dream will come tonight. You will come tonight. As you really get full control of what your character does, what they do, where they go, but that might have to be where the compliments end. I'm sure staring at the screen, you've probably noticed this huge menu to your left. That's not a menu, and honestly, I don't really know what that is. Apart from random abilities and options, there was no tutorial and therefore no game, as I had no idea what to do or what I even could do. I was just dropped in. Due to this, I lost interest fairly quickly. This is the sign from Minecraft. Don't think I don't know this. If there was simply a tutorial, this wouldn't have happened at all. But alas, I was so lost. I'm going with B tier, since as I said, there was a really great game under all this shit. But I simply didn't know what I could do and where to get started. I was on my hands and knees for this game. I couldn't believe what I was playing and how fun it was. Once again, this is a free game. Not even a prologue or a demo. It's all here and you should play this immediately. I've stolen this from chat, but the best way to describe it is simply a top-down Left 4 Dead type game where you spawn in and gather resources before taking on a final boss. Of course, I didn't realize this and didn't really have the time for this, so I threw myself at the boss every time. But for as free games go, this is incredibly fun. Fun. And for whatever reason, the music went incredibly hard, and it wasn't even stolen, which is always lovely. Right, okay then, let's go! It gave the game itself an absurd amount of personality as every piece of music fit perfectly with the experience. And here we go, kings, queens, and all in-betweens, it's got free multiplayer. Oh, it's multiplayer! That ticks it for me. At this point, if you don't know that I splatoon over multiplayer games, then you haven't been watching. This game truly and utterly has it all. It might not be the top, top of the list, but it's the one I recommend the most as I feel anyone could get into this with their mates. Well, welcome to Mech vs. Bucks. Just and here we are, my the email. final no game. Email. It's been a ride. Surely I've saved the best for last, right? Nah, this game was ass. Essentially, you're in this mech and you go around killing bugs. It genuinely was not that fun at all. And it took a while for me to figure out how to even attack this thing since there wasn't a tutorial and it doesn't even have guns. But hey ho, if you're a Titanfall 2 fan that despises it's bugs, cool, then this like game is absolutely major dragon. I'll give it an E tier, which is pretty funny considering the game streak we were on, but not all endings have to be happy. If you enjoyed this video and agree with my tier list, make sure to leave it a like. We're aiming for around 200 likes just to see if we can hit it. The reception from last video was crazy. Crazy. I've never had a YouTube video get that kind of reception. And honestly, it brought a tear to my eye. If we manage to hit 100 subs by the end of the month, then I'll give a room tour or something. I don't know. Comment what you guys would like to see for a 100 sub special, I guess. And I'll see you guys next Friday.